Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Bible Illustrated Hands. Uh, today's question comes from Bashir Ibn al Yangang. I assume that's a pseudonym. Uh, he asks, Hey Boyan, I had some difficult questions posed to me by a Muslim the other day and I thought I'd share one. How would you explain to a Muslim that Christians are not polytheists? His statement was, even if the persons of the Trinity are of the same essence, they are distinct and we worship them as distinct. Thus, we, all, we are polytheists. Uh, thank you for your question, Bashir. Um, you know, uh, you should start saying to this Muslim that uh, us Christians uh, and they Muslims worship the same God. And uh, Just kidding. <laughs> I mean, I do have some anti-fans out there and uh, I thought I would give them a bit of a heyday if I said that. Uh, anyway... Uh, I think there are two ways uh, you can tackle this 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 issue this issue and uh, uh, first of all I would uh, start with the personal approach this one's a sort of theological and it might not be what uh, uh, the Muslim is going for but it may be uh, useful for him to uh, to help him understand the most holy trinity um, First of all, uh, tell him that uh, one of the biggest differences uh, uh, in, between Christianity and uh, Islam is that in Christianity, God is love, while in Islam, Allah is not love. And um, why is that so? Uh, because in order... Uh, I forgot to turn on the light. Uh, because in order for you to love, you need someone to love. And... If uh, Allah didn't have anyone to love since the beginning of time and before, uh, even before the time began, then Allah isn't love. But the very, uh, the very way God exists in Christianity uh, by Him being the Trinity means that God is always love. Uh, the, son, the Father loves the Son the, and the Holy Spirit, the uh, the the Son loves the Father and the Holy Spirit, and finally the Holy Spirit loves the Father and the Son. So uh, the very nature of existence of God in Christianity is love. And you can see that uh, everywhere in both um, Christianity uh, and in Islam, that is our different approaches, because uh, uh, even though uh, Jesus Christ is the Son of God, we are through Him God's sons and daughters. Well, whereas in Islam it is um, a major blasphemy to call oneself the son of God because Allah uh, be uh, begets not and so on. Um, also, uh, the highest uh, position you can name towards Allah in Islam is um, a slave. And that is what Islam means. It means submission and uh, uh, Muslims sort of take pride in calling themselves the slave of Allah. Now, there are cases of that in Christianity too, but it is more of expression of humility and obedience than actual position towards, um, uh, towards the deity. So, so there's that. Uh, now, uh, if you want uh, to go for a more theological route, again, this is uh, again what your uh, friend was aiming for. Um, there are a couple of things. First of all, uh, while the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are, uh, Spirit are distinct, they are not separate. That is the big thing. Uh, as we say, uh, by the way, I don't know if you're Orthodox, uh, but uh, in the Divine Liturgy, uh, that is the primary Eucharistic service uh, we serve in uh, um, the Orthodox Church, uh, we say uh, right, um, right before we begin the canon of the Eucharist, that is the consecration of gifts, we say... Um, we worship, uh, 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 we worship the Most Holy Trinity of one essence and indivisible. And this is very important because it is of one essence, it is one God, and it is indivisible. So, uh, uh, the, uh, the persons of the Trinity are worshipped as distinct but not separate. So, it is not polytheism. Um, that, that's one thing. Uh, second, th uh, uh, second thing is that uh, we had a lot of heresies in, cre uh, in Christianity, like a lot. And it is interesting that n uh, none of those heresies, none of them were polytheistic heresies. There might have been somewhere some uh, 
teaching that uh, the Most Holy Trinity is actually three gods, but, um, you know, uh, it did not uh, have enough of a following to have a very well-established name, you know. We have Arianism, the teaching that uh, the Son uh, the, the is created. Uh, we have Patripassionism and uh, Sibylianism, that uh, God manifests himself in different modes uh, towards us and, and so on. But uh, we literally uh, never had some major heresy that claimed that God is three uh, separate beings that we sort of, I, I know that there is probably some teaching out there because people are weird and they will think about it, but even if it was, at least in the, as regards to the early church, it never get, uh, gained much of a following. Um, there was also something else. Uh, by the way, uh, if you really want to nail it, uh, you should uh, <laughs> mention the concept of the createdness of Quran, because according to the majority Muslim view, uh, Quran ex uh, is uncreated, so uh, because it is sort of the literal word of God, and in a way uh, you can use uh, that against your Muslim friend. Uh, simply say, well, okay if it's distinct and that makes us polytheists, what that makes the Quran. By the way, this is something that I was completely shocked to hear, that uh, Muslims actually believe that the uh, uh, Quran is um, uncreated. There are, of, of course, differentiating, uh, differentiating opinions on it, but uh, those are a uh, uh, minority position among uh, Shia Muslims, uh, dominant uh, dominant. Uh, uh, dominant uh, Sunni position is it is uncreated. So uh, it is interesting that uh, you sort of uh, have these two uh, these two entities that are not created, Allah and Quran. And uh, at least in Christianity, the Holy uh, the the Son and the Holy Spirit are created. Uh, um, are uh, uh, I don't uh, no 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 not created. Uh, they are persons, you know. Whereas Quran is inanimate. So you have something that is uncreated, yet inanimate. So, you know, uh, I think you could uh, turn the argument around and simply say, well, uh, well, uh, Quran is, uh, uh, Quran is uh, uncreated, so why can't I worship uh, the Son of God? Well, you guys uh, literally give the Quran... Uh, uh, something that is due only to divinity, that is uncreatedness. Um, it might be that your Muslim friend does not know about this. I don't know how much people are aware of it. But if you Google createdness of Quran, you, I think you can find a lot of... Uh, uh, that uh, you could find a lot of um, material on it. You can even... Uh, you probably can find something uh, by David Wood, uh, who is a sort of a famous anti-Islamic apologist. Um, uh, that's that for now. Uh, again, the Most Holy Trinity is uh, is distinct, but not. Uh, but the persons of the Most Holy Trinity are distinct, but they are not separate, and that is what makes us monotheists. And yes, of course, it does uh, stre seem strange um, uh, to Jews and Muslims, but um, at least with Muslims, we can, uh, you know deflect the question back on them and simply ask, well, what about Quran? Uh, and uh, if they say, well, uh, who created Quran? If they say Allah, but you said it's uncreated, so what is the Quran? And if you say that it in a way proceeds from Allah, well, you just have the seeds of, well, maybe not exactly Trinity, but duality there. And uh, uh, especially with Muslims constantly emphasizing uh, the unity and oneness of God, that is, a, uh, I, I believe that is a major problem with them. I hope I was of some use to you. Um, uh, again, uh, I, I think there's uh, a lot of um, there's a lot of videos uh, out there, you know, uh, and uh, written material and apol apologetics works as regards to uh, as regards to uh, explaining the Trinity and other uh, Muslim misconceptions uh, as regards to what we believe uh, in um, in the church. Bye.